One of my favorite techniques to apply to images is this soft pastel effect, which can make photos dreamy, peaceful, and serene, and often gives the images a nostalgic feel with subdued colors and subtle shadows. Let's take a look at how we can achieve this effect in a few simple steps with PhotoP. Let's start a new project by dragging and dropping the image into PhotoP. You can follow along by downloading the images in the description or by applying this effect to one of your own photos. For this effect, we're going to be using adjustment layers only. Adjustment layers are non-destructive, which allows us to alter the image step by step, but never making a permanent change. This lets us go back and make changes to any step in the process later, allowing us to fine-tune the effect to our images. To add an adjustment layer, click on the New Adjustment Layer button under the Layers panel and choose any one of the options. When you add an adjustment layer, it will affect all layers beneath it in the Layers panel. In this case, we're going to be using multiple adjustment layers to create the effect, so we're going to put them all in a group above the layer our image is on, so we can toggle the entire effect on and off. To create a group, click the New Folder button right next to the Adjustment Layers button. Now, if we add an adjustment layer while the new folder is selected, it will be added to that group. Let's add our first adjustment layer by clicking New Adjustment Layer and choosing Curves. The Curves adjustment layer allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast of specific tones in an image by manipulating points along a curve. What that means is we can make parts of an image brighter or darker, and we can control how light or dark different areas are, like making shadows deeper or highlights brighter. If you drop down Channel, we have four options, RGB, Red, Green, and Blue. RGB affects all color channels at once while red, green, and blue let you independently adjust the red, green, and blue color intensities, enabling precise color correction and grading. We're going to start off on the RGB channel, and click here to add a point on the line. Next, click this bottom point and drag it up about halfway up this square. That's going to soften up the shadows and darker portions of our image. Next, let's switch to the red channel. Here, we need to add two points. Click to add a point here at the lower left corner and here on the upper right corner. We want to drag each down just a bit towards the lower right corner. I'll drag the upper point down into the right a bit and do the same to the lower point, but go a bit further. You can make adjustments if you're using a different image, just soften them both a bit until it looks nice. Switch to the green channel next and add two points in the same places we did on the red channel. Again, we're going to soften the shadows some by dragging the lower point straight down about one third of the way. That removes some of the green from our darker areas. This time, let's bring the upper point straight up about a quarter of the way to highlight some of the greens in the brighter colors. Now we can switch to the blue channel and add two points in the same places as before. This time, we'll bring up the blue in the darker areas by dragging the lower point to the upper left. And we can remove some of the blue in the highlights by dragging the upper point down and to the right. Check out how this has affected the original image so far. We've softened everything up by using this curves layer. Also, if you find this content useful and would like to help me make more, I have a Patreon page where you can download a PDF version of all my new tutorials. You can find a link in the description. To get the style we are going for, we need to make it look more dreamy. So, what we can do is add a new adjustment layer and choose Levels. The Levels adjustment layer lets us adjust the brightness, contrast, and overall tonal range of an image. It lets you modify the shadows, midtones, and highlights by setting input and output values for each, making it easier to correct and enhance the image's contrast and brightness. This bottom slider controls the overall output levels, but it affects the contrast alone. So we can decrease the contrast in the darker areas by dragging this bottom point up to 50. That makes it look more washed out. It gives the image a dreamy haze. Then we can add another adjustment layer. This time, select Vibrance. 
The vibrance adjustment layer increases the intensity of the colors in an image, but stops the already saturated colors from becoming too intense. It enhances the more muted colors and adjusts the overall color balance without oversaturating the already bright colors. We'll increase the vibrance all the way to 100. And we want to desaturate the image a little by dragging saturation down to negative 30. Add another adjustment layer. And this time, select Brightness Contrast. The Brightness Contrast adjustment layer allows us to adjust the overall brightness and contrast of an image. It increases or decreases the lightness of the image and adjusts the difference between the light and dark areas, which can help to enhance visual impact and clarity. With all of the adjustments we've made, we've lost some clarity and detail, and we can get some of that back by increasing the contrast here. I'll set it to 20. And you can see, the difference is subtle, but it kind of tightens everything up. The next step is to add a gradient map adjustment layer. With a gradient map, we can apply a gradient to the tonal range of our image. This means we'll replace the image's shades of gray with colors from the gradient, which lets us create unique color effects and looks. Let's add it to the group by clicking on New Adjustment Layer and selecting Gradient Map. Click on the gradient bar here to open the gradient editor. We want to set custom colors for the gradient, so double-click the black color stop at the bottom of the gradient to bring up the color picker, and set it to 243-190. Click OK, and double-click the other color stop. Set it to 80BE90, and click OK and make sure to click OK again to apply the colors to the gradient map, not the X in the corner. If you click the X and close out of the window, the colors won't be added to the gradient map. Next, we need to change the blending mode of the gradient map layer to soft light. The soft light blending mode darkens the darker areas and brightens the lighter areas, and it creates a gentle natural enhancement without harsh effects. Lower the opacity down to 0%, and slowly bring it up to figure out how much you want the effect to alter the image. I think around 60% looks nice for this image, but depending on yours, anywhere from 50 to 75 or even 80 should look good. Last, we're going to add a gradient fill adjustment layer, which lets us apply a gradient over the image, which we'll use to darken the edges and put the focus on the subject. Click New Adjustment Layer and select Gradient Fill. From here, we have a couple settings to change. First, we want to change the style of the gradient from linear to radial. Then, we want to check the reverse box so the gradient will be inverted. Let's change the blending mode of the gradient fill layer. We're going to set it to darken and then lower the opacity down to about 50% so we can see the image coming through. Now that we can better see what we're doing, we can change the scale of the gradient fill layer by bringing it down to narrow the focus on the subject, or bringing it up to widen the focus. I want to scale the gradient up so it darkens just the edges of our photo. I'll set it to about 200%. Then we can bring the opacity down to about 20%. Here we have our final result, a nice soft pastel effect that we've achieved using only adjustment layers. You can see how much this effect can alter the appearance of an image. This effect works great on lots of different photos, giving them a classic look that invokes nostalgia. If you've made it this far and you got some value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it to anyone who might find it useful, and subscribe for more videos. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.